he went to draws according to that he went to draws philippi then tesonigia berea iluria iluria all these places paul and his team visited all this like these all places are in the region of macedonia this macedonia was a larger uh, area region region and now all these places according to romans chapter 5 verse 19 15 verse 19 he confirmed the churches in faith and in the word of god all these places he revisited met the believers confirmed them in the faith and also in the word of god paul was not doing the ministry as some of we, some of some of us we do in these days we go to a place stand there preach the gospel if some people they believe we leave them there and then go away paul was not like that paul was visiting from place to place wherever the churches were established at all those places paul revisited the churches and then confirmed the believers in the faith and also in the word understand so this is mandatory that means necessary in our public ministry and it was at this place paul wrote his second epistle to corinthians and the epistles to the galatians it was at this place paul wrote his second epistle to corinthians and the epistles to galatians now let us go into the world of the greek world of the greek the macedonian area from where he goes to the world of the greek the greek world was famous for philosophy famous for philosophy the ancient philosophers socrates his disciples aristotle pliny plato and many more philosophers lived in the old grecian world old grecian world paul stayed there nearly 3 months paul stayed there nearly 3 months and from there around AD 58 he wrote to the romans thus we have the epistle to the romans and from there paul is stepping into the place called troas 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 according to acts chapter 20 paul stayed at troas for about 7 days for about 7 uh, days that means a week he stayed there about 7 days and it was on the first day of the week first day of the which is the first day of the week which is the first day of the week sunday, sunday. and he stayed there for about 7 days and the first day of the week he along with the saints there along with the saints there he observed the lord's supper observe the lord's supper very very clearly it is written there and uh, uh, during that day that means that time paul had prolonged his preaching prolonged his preaching till late in the morning that means throughout the night the night time they gathered together to observe the lord's table and uh, they remembered the agony of jesus christ and uh, after that <coughs> paul began to <coughs> preach in that condition people were interested in hearing the word of god and the next day he had to travel so paul longed his preaching for hours what happened there was a young man who was sitting at the window side on the third floor he became asleep fell down on the ground but paul raised him out from the that paul raised him out from the death in the notice man 
Apostle Peter and Apostle Paul have raised the dead ones. Paul had raised the dead ones. Jesus Christ has raised the dead ones. Though that account is available in the four Gospels. And later his apostles like Peter and Paul, they too, they raised the dead ones. From here, from Thomas, after having this incident, that means Thomas, he stayed for three, three months. And uh, there, from and Thomas, he stayed for only seven days. And uh, Athens, he stayed for three months. And while he was staying in Thomas, he waited up to the seventh of uh, the first day of the week, that was Sunday, to observe the Lord's table. It is from this passage we have oriented our practices of observing Lord's table on the first day of the week. Because the, even though the church is gathering several times in the week for Bible study, for quarter meetings, for uh, gospel meetings, or for evangelistic activities, it is only on Sunday for our convenience that we are observing Lord's Supper uh, while we are gathered. That is on Sunday. From there, Paul came to the place called Malta. Place called Malta. It was a harbor city. It was a harbor city. You know what is harbor city? Harbor city is a place city. Near to that, there will be a harbor where the ships and the boats are coming. People are sailing through the boats and then ships. That was a harbor city. And when he came to Malta, that is Miletus, Miletus in another word, he called, he called on the elders of the church. Called on the elders of the church. There was a conference of the elders, conference of the elders, and in which Apostle Paul delivered a beautiful message. This message is generally known as Paul's farewell meeting at Ephesus. Paul's farewell meeting at Ephesus. While Paul was ministering in Macedonia, Ephesus, the Spirit of God spoke to him, saying that he has to witness also in Jerusalem, as was in other places. So, and uh, the Spirit also revealed him. Uh, bindings and uh, sufferings are awaited for him. Bindings and uh, sufferings are awaited for him. But Paul did not know what kind of bindings and what kind of sufferings awaited him in their city. But Spirit revealed him that he had to go here. So being bound by the Spirit of God, he went into the went to Jerusalem after his uh, final meeting with the saints in Ephesus. The, uh, that was an elders conference which he called on wherein he preached to them and reminded them seven important aspects which they had to take care of or take care so, so these all these seven points are very important so I would uh, like to recite all these seven points right now. Listen here and in these seven points Paul reminded the elders who gathered there that the ministry which the Spirit of God has entrusted them is a ministry which the Lord Jesus Christ gave them. Who okay, gave this ministry? Jesus Christ gave. <coughs> Chapter 20, <coughs> verse 24. Paul says, <coughs> the ministry which he had and the ministry these elders have right now is the ministry which the Lord Jesus Christ gave them. And verse 24. Now, uh, secondly, in chapter 20, verse 19, 31, 37, Paul reminded them that this is a ministry of tears. The gospel ministry is not a ministry of joy on all time. It's a ministry of Tears. Ministry of tears. Number three, this is a ministry of humility. Verse 19. 
It's a ministry of humility. Everyone please listen here. First of all, it's a ministry which the Lord Jesus Christ gave. And secondly, it's a ministry of deeds. And thirdly, it's a ministry of humility. Humility of ministry of humility. Many places Paul had to humble, humble himself beyond his imagination for the sake of the gospel. And number four, it's a ministry of warning. What is warning? Warning is some instructions or information given before the day gates occur. Understand? As we drive through the road, we have several warning signs in the road. Have you seen it? School is there. Don't sound born. Uh, left, uh, hairpin curve, left hairpin curve, right, dead, dead. All these signs we have to obey, otherwise we will occur in what? Danger. We will occur in danger. So Paul said this is a ministry of what? Warning. And fifthly, Paul said in verse number 33 to 35, ministry of warning is actually verse number 29 to 31 and in chapter 33 to 35 Paul says, this is a ministry which is free from lust of money, free from lust of money. In these days, the evangelical world has turned into a marketplace where gospel has been economized. Gospel has been economized, marketed. People are conducting spiritual services, gospel services to amass money from the public. Whatever you have, you give it here and God will bountifully increase your rewards in heaven. So people will be fascinated by this, uh, this uh, people with the lust of money deliver their messages. And uh, they are squeezing and squeezing money from the poor believers and who poor audience and these people are becoming rich and rich and rich. Very recently somebody has sent me a cartoon. The past is this much in size. This much in size. Putting on the coats, shoes and everything. And the believer who feeds him on every Sunday with his poor money begin thin like a would have begin. Listen. Pastor is getting puffed up. The believer is getting thin and thin, thinner and thinner. Why? He is squeezing the money from the poor people. Gospel should not be market. Word of God should not be market. It should not be economist or commercialist. The best of it is not economist but commercialist. There is an economy of the gospel. Gospel and the word of God should not be commercialized. When it is commercialized, we, we are trying to market it for benefit. Market it for benefit. We are on the attempt to earn money by the presentation of the word of God. That is what we see in YouTube and uh, social media nowadays. The general publics are bluffed, blinded by the charismatic presentation of Prosperity gospel. Prosperity gospel. You know what is prosperity gospel? These people say, if you give 10 to God, He will give you 100 years in return. This is prosperity gospel. None of the disciples of Jesus Christ were rich. They all were poor people. If they wanted to become rich people by marketing the gospel of Jesus Christ, they would have become millionaires of their age. But they never did it. They were, they were evangelizing the world by the power of the Spirit of God. Miracles and signs accompanied them, their ministry. Powerfully they bore witness to the Lord Jesus Christ. Several hundred thousand people, they heard the gospel and believed and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and then When you are equipped on the word of God, you should understand that you are here in the Bible College not to earn how to market the word of God in the public places and earn money. But how to present the word of God in order 
that the soul should be added to the kingdom of god understand so this is not a business this is a ministry and sixthly from verses 19 to 22 paul says that this is a ministry of sufferings ministry of sufferings as many places that paul visited in the first second and third mission journeys paul had to undergo many kinds of suffering some places he was beaten up some places he was stoned and to death some places he was despised and rejected by the jewish community some places he has they had to run away from there because the place and the people had no mind to accept the presentation of apostle paul and some places even where he was shut 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 in fortresses for his life and some places even the military intervention was there to protect his life and so it was a mystery ministry of suffering and finally he stated them verse number 20 to 27 it's a ministry in which that he revealed the full revelation and counsel of god to his people complete counsel of god revealed to people so these are the seven important aspects which paul presented to the elders in melekes where the elders were called home and in that elder elder elders conference that he said this is a ministry which is given to you by the lord jesus christ and this is a ministry of tears it's a ministry of humility it's a ministry of warning that is coming day there paul reminded them that you when, when i have left this place that uh, wolves shall come out come up from among them who will not regard the sheep so he was pointing out the danger of the coming up of the false teachers who would drive away the innocent believers after them who would also teach them the false doctrines and then he said this is a ministry which is free from the lust of money and it's a ministry of sufferings and also this is a ministry in which the whole counsel of god was revealed to the saints from malta he again said goodbye to the saints and then he started his sail through the ship and uh, during the journey during the travel he uh, went into saw caesarea and uh, finally came to jerusalem came to jerusalem so chapter 20 and 21 ended up with uh, paul's ministry in this uh, services now we have to learn chapter 22 23 24 25 and 26 in these four chapters chapter 22 23 24 25 and 26 this uh, four chapters we have paul's defense before the lord people that is jewish people and paul's defense before the governor felix paul's defense before governor festus paul's defense before king agrippa understand four defenses before his own people before felix the governor before festus the governor and then before agrippa the king agrippa the king at all this defense he was not received he had not received his justice in the gospel and finally when he knew that his rights were denied his rights were denied his justice was not given to him he called on the roman caesar roman caesar who was the supreme jet in the roman world so we see in chapter 27 and 28 Paul's voyage to Rome, the shipwreck, and his stay in the Rome, and continuing his ministry there. So let us 
right now uh, the the <coughs> north zone chapter 20 and uh, 21 and later on we will go into uh, the chapter 22 and before which i would just give a little summary about chapter 22 paul was sent to jerusalem paul was sent to jerusalem jerusalem was his was the place where his own people that is jewish people settled and chapter 21 we read that the jewish people made certain uh, you know plot against the plot against apostle paul so that he should be killed that no more he should preach the message of jesus christ they knew that the expansion of christianity is a danger to the existence of judaism that means fast the church was growing fast the gospel was spreading all over the all over even the roman world so they were afraid of christian people to swallow up judaism so that the jews will have damaged their existence and christian people overtake them so they made some some plots against apostle paul and therefore in jerusalem the uh, you know the, the 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 authorities the military authorities military authorities city get called caught peter and uh, bound him with the chains and uh, uh, he put him in a fortress put him in a fortress otherwise he knew that the jews will kill him jews will kill him thus in chapter 22 Paul had the privilege to address his own people. The next day, Paul was brought out the the fortress, and he stood in front of his own people to present his defence. Where, when he was preaching, he explained to them about his repentance, what he had experienced at the city gate of Damascus in chapter nine of the book of Acts, and also. about god's appointment concerning his future and he said god sent me to the gentiles god sent me to the gentiles god sent me to the gentiles ah and when they heard paul was saying that god had sent him to the gentile world they made much more rights in the city much more rights in the city because an orthodox jew cannot conceive the idea of preaching salvation to the gentiles salvation to the gentiles because they believe they continually believe the gospel or the way of salvation was intended only for the Jews, not for the nations, but they fail to understand the promise which God gave to Abraham, their forefather. When God told Abraham, we understand that God told him, God told him that in thee the whole nations of the world shall be blessed. That means God promised the blessings to the whole nations of the world, the descendants of the world. through the descendants of abraham you understand so god's way of salvation god presented to the gentile world was preaching the way of salvation to the gentiles through the jews but jews failed to understand that god has intended salvation not only for the, the jews but also for the gentiles so what happened these people began to make much noises and voices confounded the whole city the city magistrate city magistrate was unable to control the mob so he was taken in again by the soldiers having beaten him with a bat 
eh? so he was terribly beaten scores scores scorely scorely scores scorely you know scorely jesus was scorned by the soldiers paul was scorned by the roman soldiers and uh, when they took the scorn scorn in their hand to about to beat him paul asked them a, jo- a question they i being a roman citizen how can you how can you beat me like that hello hello paul said paul said what i being a citizen roman citizen how do you command to beat me with a sword when the city magistrate heard that he was a roman citizen he was quite trembled because roman citizen nobody should touch him nobody should beat him without he being interrogated of his laws understand if he is not being interrogated of his laws nobody could have touched him so he was kept in the fortress and then brought before the sanidri brought before the sanidri okay